Though the new prepay system was designed mostly to help with online orders, it is actually a fantastic way to work with in-store or over the phone orders and prepayments as well. So whether your store requires prepayment for all orders, whether again, it's online or in-store or over the phone, or if a customer insists on prepaying for a maybe a pre-order, a forthcoming release, or just so they don't have to pay for it when they pick it up, that's fine. And the system works great for that as well. The process starts the exact same way as you would normally look up a book. When a customer phones in or is looking for something, I always start the process with an F2 for search. This is where I can look up. Let's look up an ISBN here. So let's throw in Louise Penny's uh, upcoming book here. So we've got a future release date on this title, August 24th, um, and say the customer wants to prepay for it. So we're gonna order this just like normal. I'm gonna check the pub stock first, as I always do, make sure I can in fact order it or there will be sources or who my source will be. Then I can do the over order command. I can arrow below to select and pull a, a stock from a sent order right here. Or I can use this above line here, this top line to make a new order. So I'm just gonna make a new order, one copy. I'm gonna put in the customer's name or phone number. I do it by phone number, it's faster in my opinion. Select my customer account, great. Uh, how does the customer wanna be notified? Email, great. Verify my source here. So I'm gonna choose Raincoast in this case, great. I throw in here what I quoted the customer or estimated. So it's gonna be a quoted $36.99 uh, Raincoast and you know, they are aware that it's not yet released. I always throw in this note field what I told the customer it was gonna cost, who I'm ordering it from, and the time frame. And in this case, it's a not yet released title. So you will notice that this order screen has one new field called Perpy or prepay. So it's the very last field and a quick way to get there, and this is just a general power user tip. I can press control end on my keyboard and it will quick jump there. So the control end will function, will go to the last field uh, in, of a form in Book Manager, whereas control home will go to the very first field. So this is where I can quick jump from the status field to the prepay field by pressing control end or control home. So just a handy little uh, tidbit there. When I'm in the prepay field, I press Y for yes, enter my clerk code, and now I get an option box. Now there's more that can go on in this box, so it's it's looking big, but right now it's uh, two options. Basically set up a new held prepay. So if the customer wants to prepay for this, or you, you, know, you set it in the last step, yes, you wanna prepay. So it's pretty much assumed that you wanna choose this first option. But if you change your mind, the customer changes their mind, you can either enter down or arrow down and press enter on escape, or you can just press escape to cancel the prepay. But I'm gonna choose set up a new held prepay. It's now updated and told me that a prepay issued has been created on this held number. And I get two more choices. Go to the existing held prepay. So if I am done, this is all the customer would like and they wanna just finish uh, paying for their prepay and and leave, that's what I would choose. But if I have more books to look up or more things that they may wanna prepay, I would choose escape. In this case, let's just say the customer is in fact looking for another book or something else. I'm gonna press escape here and I'm gonna do a search again. And I've got another title here to look up. So I'm just basically uh, pasting an ISBN in the keywords, page up twice to do a search. And here we go, um, Hillary Clinton's upcoming novel uh, coming out in October. So why not? The customer would like to this, get this as well. So I do the usual comma pub stock, check who am I gonna be getting this from? Probably Simon & Schuster. I'm now gonna do an O for order, put in my quantity. This is a little tip here. If you don't know, you can press the F5 key to recall the last customer account number used. Uh, so this is so you don't have to type in their phone number or name again. I can just hit F5 and enter and it will bring up my account. And I'm gonna go down, make sure my spender is in here, Simon & Schuster. I would actually go to the note field, put in what I quoted the customer, quoted them $24.99. Um, I'm gonna do Simon & Schuster and also aware not yet released. This is where I would then do control end to get to the prepay or I can just arrow down to it, whatever you prefer. 
yes to this, I'll throw in the clerk code. It says set up a new prepay health, a new held prepay, or again, I cannot prepay. So again, I wanna add another prepay. Press enter on this. So now at this point, uh, once again, I'm faced with, I can go to the existing held prepay if I'm all done all, all my ordering and I wanna actually take the customer's uh, cash now, that's what I would choose. So let's just press enter on go to the existing held prepay. That will bring me to the point of sale and it brings me to this transaction that was created uh, through the prepay process. So now I have a held sale with the two items that they wanting to prepay and you'll see the statuses are uh, different, are new. We've got prepay issued for something on order. So it's in yellow, indicating that it's an active prepay. It has not been finished or it's not completed. The O at the end is indicating these are prepays being issued for items that are on order, so they're not in stock. We also get the quantity 1P, saying you're, you're prepaying one of them. Um, and all the rest is kind of the same. We do get a total with this. So we've got an actual total that we can tender out. So you don't have to figure out the taxes and the math yourself. It's getting it all calculated for you. And at this point, this is where I would hit E for edit, throw in my clerk code. And if the customer say is standing in front of me and we're doing an order and they wanna check out or buy something else, we can do that. They can, they can prepay for some items and they can also buy something that they're leaving with today. Let's complicate things. Let's make it a busy uh, first scenario here. I'm gonna scan a book that uh, is in stock. They're also wanting to buy, say this book here. So now we have something that is in stock and also things that are prepaying for. So we've got a new total here, including the whole lot. They could use a gift card. Again, they can buy multiple items. Doesn't really matter. You can just treat the point of sale like you normally would. I'm now gonna go through to tendering. If you watched our first video, the first part on online orders, this message, usually you're saying yes, because the customer with online orders, they're not here to pick up in stock items. You're setting it aside for future pickup. But in this case, we actually wanna go down here and choose the no option because one items are in stock, you have these in your hand. We don't need a held invoice for this. The customer is taking them now. So I'm gonna press enter on this option. Now uh, the tendering works just like usual. You're gonna go select the, the tender, pin pad, cash, however you do it. We'll just say it's Visa and I can print a receipt. So let's just, I'll show you what the receipt looks like. So I'm gonna do receipt. I'm gonna do a P for preview here uh, and bring it up on my screen. So if we go down here, we can see the receipt's gonna show you what they bought, but it's gonna indicate about the prepay status. So madness of crowds, stock coming, it's a prepayment. State of terror, stock coming, prepayment. So it's very clear to the customer on the receipt what they have prepaid for. So now the seal is completed and we're good to go. We now have prepayment issues for this and the customer uh, took their book and we're all done. We don't have to do anything else. Everything is as it should, nothing to set aside. So that's a pretty simple scenario here. The same sort of scenario could be applied for in-stock items as well. In the case of, say, a customer phoning in and saying, oh, do you have this book in stock? Let's just, we'll use maybe that same ISBN I did before, but maybe they want the remainder version. I think I have a remainder in stock. So say a customer is looking for a book. So I've done an F2 search. I've used the keywords page up. I found the title they're looking for. I can say, oh yeah, we have this in our bargain section for $8.99. And they go, great, can I pay for that over the phone right now with my credit card? And I'll go, sure, why not? Cool. So this is where I would grab the book first, usually before I take any cash over the phone or say like, come on down and pick it up. I always like to make sure I have the book in my hand. So that's where I would go to my shelf, grab it, and then I would start a new transaction I don't need to do any sort of ordering because I have it in stock. So I start a new transaction, put in my customer's name, scan the book. I'm not selling it. This book is not leaving the store right now. The customer is gonna come in and pick it up later. So this is where I wanna arrow back up to the item and use the B for back order toggle to mark this as a prepay. So I can B for back order, mark it as a prepay. My total remains. So now I'm gonna enter through. And now we get this little pop-up. So in this scenario, we actually wanna choose the yes option because we do need to create a held for future pickup. The customer is not in the store at this moment. They are gonna pick it up later. So I'm gonna press enter on that, take their payment. So maybe they read me their credit card over the phone and I charge it away and it all looks good to go. Boom. And it's telling me here, one items were added as a prepay redeemed to a held number, 
blah, blah, blah. So this is basically telling me the system has created a held for future pickup. So hooray. The status is also now showing that there's been a prepay issued and it's being redeemed on this. So they are, this isn't something that is uh, needing to be ordered. The R at the end uh, is basically telling you we're redeeming a prepay for this and it's been added to a held pickup. So this is where now I could at this point print a pick list uh, for this item, a tag. If you use an Epson or a Bixalon printer, we have the little barcodes that print at the top that you can scan to bring up a held sale. You can also scan the barcode on the back of the book but this is where in our store, we really like those held receipts. And that is one little nuance to the system that we're just trying to iron out right now. If you were to print a pick list for this particular transaction, it's a completed transaction. So it won't work, you know, it won't link to the actual held sale. So that is one thing we're ironing out right now. The way to get around it is to basically copy this. I search it, then can print P for print and L for pick list or an H for held receipt. Either one will work just fine. So that's, you know, one little caveat to this is you want to print that pickup, that pick list or held receipt from this held sale. But otherwise, there we go. We're all done. We can see this held sale that was created for the future pickup. It's saying prepay redeemed. There's no cash uh, to exchange hands at this point. Uh, so when they do come to pick it up, they won't owe anything, but the sale will be recorded. Your cost of goods sold will be adjusted. And we'll discuss the picking up, the receiving, and the end of day sales tapes and all that in later videos. One thing to mention here is to do with error reporting and when things maybe go sideways or uh, when you try to do things things unintentionally, Book Manager will try to warn you if you're going to basically mess up a prepayment. For example, let's go to that prepay issue transaction, the Visa one, and say I at this point try to delete it. If I go D for delete on it, it's going to actually not allow me, even though it's a current sale, can't alter this transaction. It contains a prepay issue items that have been filled with a prepay redeem. The transaction filling the prepay would need to be voided or deleted. Basically, it's saying that that held sale created, you need to do something with that before you can actually modify this one. This is essentially in place to stop you from creating an orphaned prepay. So you can't get in the scenario of, again, having a prepay redeemed without any linking tender. So this is kind of protecting you. In this case, if you wanted to undo this whole thing, what we would need to do is look up this held invoice here, search for it. And if I delete this one, then when I go to that current sale, you will also see now that I've deleted that held, we've got a red status prepay issue. It's saying you wanted to issue a prepayment, but there's an exclamation point saying that there's no linking entry to this. There is no book set aside for them. There's no held sale or there's no order. That's what this kind of exclamation and red uh, means is, you know, there's no accompanying order or held sale for this. So there's a problem. So if you ever see this, you want to look into these. They may be, again, just an online order that has not been dealt with yet, or it could be a problem. Anywhere in Book Manager, red usually means some follow up is needed. But at this point, maybe this was intentional and I could now hit D for delete and void it and all would be well. You will also notice that once I have completed or resolved a prepayment, it has gone gray and there's a little V at the end in this scenario telling you that this was actually avoided prepayment.